Still got looks aggressive. The jumper. <laughs> do you reckon you do a version how to choose your channels and cassettes? So I have my cycling specific channel. You may be watching on this. CTFU Cycling is my cycling specific channel, and there's GCN. Good channel from England. Some good tips. How to choose your channel cassette. Doing right, can you share your tips and hints? I remember in 2000, a guy walked in uh, to the shop I used to hang out at, and he put an XTR derailleur on a 2000 Trek uh, USPS postal OCLV carbon frame, and we were just like, uh, okay, you put a mountain bike derailleur on your road bike. Soft cock. And that's what we all thought, and he sort of was a bit of soft cock. But, but, he was more advanced than us, and he knew about cadence. This is a 34 cassette, isn't that nice? It's just this fucking bling, I should wear this in my fucking necklace. Yo, motherfucker, I'm climbing the hills! And, uh, rap career is on hold. It's a 34 cassette, meaning 34 teeth on the biggest cassette. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 34. 34 cassette. This is gonna go on a bike that's got a triple ring. That is so shiny, isn't it? Look at that, makes my eyes look nice. And, uh, this is gonna go on a triple ring bike. Roberto Harris. We used to make fun of triple rings. Roberto Harris was the guy who won the Velta, I think it was 2000, 2003, and he used a triple ring crank. I remember reading the magazine, well, I was on cyclingnews.com, and I looked, I looked and I was like, I was just like, what's going on? Are they trolling? He, Roberto Harris, one of, the, Harris, one of the best climbers in the world, is using a triple ring. And I was like, is it April Fool's Day? No, it's not. What's going on here? And I just, I just couldn't comprehend it. I'm just like, why the fuck would it, Roberto use a triple ring? And then I started training with the power meter. 2009, and then I was like, ah, cadence. That's what Dr. Ferrari was talking about all the time. So you got to use whatever gears, excuse me, you got to use whatever gears you need to get your cadence. You want to have your cadence at least between 80 and 100 when you're trying to go full gas. If you're going to full gas in your local climb and you can't hit 80 to 100 cadence, then you need to put easier gears in your bike. That's why I recommend everyone rides a compact crank, a 50 tooth, 50 tooth, 34 on the front, and on the back at least a 32 or a 28. Depends where you live, but I'd recommend it for 32 if you can. Especially if you have an Adelaide, 32 or 34 even. Or even a 40, even a 36. Put a mountain bike derail on there or SRAM XO2 uh, Type 2 derail or whatever. Use whatever gearing you need to hit a cadence of at least 80 to 100 when you're trying to go full gas up your favourite climb. If you can't hit 80 cadence when you're trying to go full gas up your favourite climb, you need easy gearing. All right, and then that's why I can ride up hills now with no hands. I can ride up Kensington Road in South Australia with no hands because I've got a 34 on the back and I've got a 24 at front. I put, I put fucking mountain bike cranks. <laughs> I pulled the mountain bike cranks off my 29er, put them on my Cad 9 Cannondale. So now I've got a, a 24, 34, easy gear. So a 20, 20 speed cassette, uh, 20, speed drive, 20, speed, 20 speed drive chain. So this is, this is crazy. You use whatever gears you need to use. And if anyone says, you don't need to use your gears, you go tell them Duran Riders on your ass. You go tell them to challenge Duran Riders. Just go and tell them the fucking Everest Kensington Road or Everest Woodlands Way or Everest Mount Washington or some decent climb. All right? Ask them how their knees are. If someone says, the Duran Riders gear choice is, is too easy. It's so like, come out train with me. Come out climb with me. Let's do some hill repeats up some steep climbs. Of course, guys like uh, you know top climbers won't need easy gearing for most climbs. But even the best climbers in the world, even when Contador was busted and served a drug suspension, he still had a 34-32 combo. So if Contador, a climbing specialist on drugs, needed a 34-32, then I'm sure the average rider getting into the cycling and going up the climbs is going to benefit from also having the same gearing or bigger gearing, easier gearing than Contador. All right, so people will say, oh, you just need to stand, you just got to get stronger. Cycling's not about strength. Have you seen Chris Froome lately? Does he look like a strong man? But he's got cadence, and cadence equals power. All right, cadence equals power. Cadence plus torque equals power. So if you push those little pedals around faster, you get more power. So there you go. How to choose proper gearing? Have at least 80 to 100 cadence on your favorite clients. Invest in a power meter. Power meter is the best thing you can get, and then you'll quickly learn why easy gearing, spinning is winning. And just go on YouTube and type in Chris Froome cadence, and you'll see plenty of videos of this skinny dude like a grasshopper on a bike just <laughs> spinning it off and putting out the biggest power watts per kilo out of anyone pretty much in the clients, and on the flat as well. 
and on the flats. Chris Froome's winning time trials, long time trials. <laughs> so it's cadence, man. It's fucking cadence. Use whatever gearing you need to hit at least 80 to 100 cadence. But so how do I calculate 80 to 100 cadence? Get a Garmin and get a power meter. You can buy a cadence sensors and all that stuff, but save your money. Sell a kidney, sell a child, sell your body for a weekend. Get a power meter. Stages power meter or a power tap are the two best product on the market. Cheap, light, relatively cheap for us living in a Western economy. So be grateful living in a Western economy. Save your pennies, get a power meter, a stages crank or a power tap power meter. Those two ones, stages or power tap. Leave your comments and questions down below. Get some bling, get some bling.